Hi everyone, it's Michelle and this is my Flossmas day number 17. I had to check then because I couldn't remember. Oh, talk about a brain fade. How is everyone doing? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good today. Today has been a good day. Um, I've got my new lipstick on from yesterday, which is actually a lip shine. So it looks a lot darker in the tube than it actually is. Uh, it's called Plum Shine from Marks and Spencer's, the autograph range. So I'm pretty happy with that. Right, I have got freebies. I have got stitching. I've got previous finishes. I've got my fabric to show you that I finished ironing and had dyed yesterday. And I am so happy with it. I'm so, so happy with it. I can't wait to show you. And obviously the advent calendars. I'm going to show you the previous stitches first because if I don't, there is zero chance I'm going to remember who they are by. So this one I'm going first with because this is the one that I can't seem to hold in my head. This is Halloween Lamb by Primitive Acorns and I stitched it on a piece of 32 count elixir by X2 Designs. So it's the other half, well not half obviously, but it's the other bit of this. So I had a fat quarter of that and I used it all. I absolutely used every last bit of it. So that is Halloween Lamb by Primitive Acorns. And I just used kind of colours that I thought would, would go. It wasn't very complicated colours anyway. So, and then I just finished the back with a little bit of black wool and some felt circles. If you go on to, I think it's eBay, you can buy felt shapes that have already been pre-cut out. And I bought some from a while ago. And so I didn't fancy, because the felt was a little bit thicker, I didn't fancy trying to stitch the edge together. So I did the technique where you open the, you stitch it all the way around on your sewing machine and then you open the back in order to stuff it. And I just covered it with a little um, coordinating colors patch on the back. It's not my favorite way to finish things, but I uh, I tried it for this method. And it's just taken me probably 10 minutes to find this. Cause first of all, I looked at it and I was like, in my, in my whip list and I was like, or my finishes list, I was like, what is that? What is that? And then I was like, well, right, well, where is it? And I found it tucked away in a little basket at the back there. So I'll put it there. This one is called Eye of Newt. And this is the second in my Satsuma Street collection and one of my uh, 12 ornaments from my monthly Orny Sal. Uh, it's by, did I say it was by Satsuma Street? I can't remember. Again, it's one of those, let me just see if I can get this one. It's one of those ones where you buy a PDF with four designs on, sorry. The other one, the other cat one is just on this little tree here. And I'm just trying to, get it off but it's totally tangled and I mean totally tangled there we go let's just ferret it out from behind there um so there were four in each of the sets so there's two from one set and I noticed I looked the other day and there is another set out for this year so there was a set for 2019 2020 and 2021 there was a new set out with another another four ornaments so I might have to get those I, I'm promising myself I'm going to finish the other two first I, I've got to I've got to start being a little bit stricter with myself finish the two you've got first Michelle and then you can buy the others but that doesn't always work and the other thing that I have finished is my when I think of April by Puntini Puntini now somewhere in the bag with all the other Pantini Pantinis will be the chart with the button that goes on there. So that will be made into a band to go around my um, spool. Do you see that? Band to go around my spool. <laughs> We've got hand movements going on now. Right. My stitching. What have I been stitching on? I've gone back to this one, which I think I had out yesterday as well, which is the 
Prairie School at Evergreen. Really loving it. Although I did look at my whip list today, actually, and there are a few things I think, yeah, I definitely need to get those finished before Christmas. So I might have to um, put my big girl pants on and try and finish off some of those. But that's where I am. So I'd started the owl, decided that I wasn't going to work on the owl last night because I dyed my fingers. Uh, and then I did some houses, put in the white today at school and then decided I was going to start the deer as well. So this is, uh, this is how I roll. This is how I roll. So that's all I've done today, stitching wise. Um, got quite a lot of marking on at the moment. Year 11s have had their mocks, so that's going to be uh, interesting giving those back out. They've done, they've done good. They've done all right. Um, we've just found out today as well that the start of term next year in January has been delayed by two days for the students. So we've got two days training um, and then it's up to the schools to decide how they're going to deploy us. So we may or may not be actually on the on site for those two days um, or part of those two days. It's up, it's up to the schools to decide. And then the pupils will start back two days later than, than was first suggested. So... We shall see. We shall see what happens. Um, and let's go freebie. I'm going to save my fabrics. I'm going to save my fabrics to show you. So this is the freebie that I've picked out today. Um, and this is actually from Rebecca, who is Hedro Stitcher. And she put this on her Instagram. You can go and download a proper copy from her website. So you just basically put it almost put it in your basket. I've just grabbed the screenshot of this one, okay? Um, but you almost like put it in your basket and then you'll get the you'll get the proper PDF through so that you can actually stitch this lovely winter freebie. And it's a nice winter one as well. I do need some more winter things to keep out after I've put all the Christmas things away. But at the minute, I just keep it getting attracted to Christmas things. I didn't think I was big into Christmas stitching this year, but I have proved myself wrong <laughs> and again once again this year I have found that I am contrary even to myself because all I've picked out is Christmas things it's Christmas things. okay let's have a look at these fabrics then so if you remember I just shut that I was dyeing fabrics for this stitch along so it's called a year in the woods by Cottage Garden Samplings. Now, I'm sure you have all seen the fox. He has been super popular everywhere. Um, and the plan is that if you want to stitch them all together, you can stitch them all together on Vintage Country Mocker, or they have suggested different fabrics depending on the season. So let's see if I can remember them. Picture this plus, is it Mirage? Did I write them down? I may have written them. Mirage, yeah. Um, so that would be for the winter ones. The spring ones would be done on Velt. The summer ones would be done on Valor and the autumn ones would be done on Oaken. So I knew we'd, I'd have trouble sourcing those. And I just wanted to have a go at dyeing my own. I think I think that was my overriding thing that I wanted to have a go at dyeing my own. Now you're gonna to have to bear in mind that all I'm working for is from is the picture. So I'll show you the picture, which shows what colour the fabrics are. I've got a piece of Mirage and I've had Oaken before. So I, I've got a reasonable real-time idea of what those look like. I've never had Velt before and I've never had Valor before, personally. I've seen people stitch with them, I've seen them on Flossy, but I've never actually held a piece in my in my grubby little mitts so I'm going on pictures really and I'm happy I'm happy now bear in mind that these have not been anywhere near uh, mama yet so they have been they're not surged so I'll just show you them all together so those are them all together and I'm going to put the comparison picture up there so you can see I've put a picture of my Instagram and so hopefully you'll be able to see so I'll show you them individually so this is the piece for winter do I need to put I probably don't 
don't need a board. So this is the piece for winter. So this is my Mirage kind of dupe, as it were. And I've got long, thin pieces because I'm going to stitch three of them in a row on the same fabric. So that's my Mirage. The next one was Velt. Now, again, I've not seen Velt, so I just kind of had to go with what I thought the picture looked like. And to me, the picture looks like a tan, almost with a green, a greeny overlay. That's blowing out a little bit, it was better. There, the fabrics are showing up really nicely, actually. So that's my Velt. And then Valor, I've not seen at all. So this is what I've gone with. It looks to me like a grey, greeny blue. And so that's what I've done. And then Oaken is this one. It, my Oaken perhaps doesn't have the darker tones that Oaken has in it. And I've Pink Oaken has a slightly pinky tinge to it as well, and perhaps mine doesn't have that. So, I use relatively few colours actually. So, to get this colour, I mixed pearl grey with a little bit of uh, denim, denim blue, just to take the edge off the grey, and did my the most of my dyeing with that so I did a low immersion technique where I wet the fabric scrunched it up into a, a bowl I've got a picture of kind of my kit laid out scrunched it up into a bowl and then I um, spooned over the main sort of base dye which was the pearl grey with a little bit of denim blue added just to take the slight greyness off of it and then what I did was I looked at it and I actually then made up some more denim blue and just kind of spooned that over the top. I didn't leave it in for more than five, ten minutes at most and then rinsed it and hung it up to dry. So that was that one. This one, the velt. The velt I did as a tan face. So I made up some tan and just did that as the base. So pretty much covered the whole of the fabric in a sort of layer of the tan and then in order to get the green I used Kelly green as my green and then made it a bit more yellow with a yellow and I can't remember what yellow I've got and then I dulled it down a little bit with a, a bit of grey so again my base colour was tan which I put on first and then I made up my green with Kelly green, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of grey, and then just kind of spooned that over the top and let it sit. The, this one, which was Valor, I started off with pearl grey and then I added aquamarine, I think, but literally just one or two drops just to take it away from the grey and then maybe one or two drops of Kelly Green on that one. And then this one is just tan as a base. And then I made up some caramel and kind of spooned that over the top as well. And I did have a very, very, very little bit of the cocoa brown one or cocoa brown. The cocoa brown one is got a lot of red it throws up a lot of red so I only ever use that very sparingly so I've made my base color was tan I then spooned over some extra caramel and I made up a solution of cocoa brown but very weak and just sort of spooned that over as well and then lastly <laughs> I just had this tiny little bit left over and I just dunked it in I did, actually did the um, velt one last. So this was the mixture. Oh, it's just gone very yellow on that end. This was the mixture that I'd used to overlay the tan with. 
so you can see there. So this was the mixture that I'd used to overlay the tan with and so I just dunked the little bit that I had left in there because I thought it'd be fun for something. Never waste any fabric. Never waste any. Um, it's going to be interesting stitching on them. The fox is the middle one of the three so I'm going to have to work out where on there I'm going to stitch him and obviously I'm going to try and save as much fabric as I can because these are a little bit long. So if I can just get an ornament on the end as well I'll be well happy. Um, but then after that the uh, months come out in order. So let's just put them back, put them back together and I'm super excited about this stitch along, really am. Um, so there they are, I don't know if you can hear Ness singing but she is. There we go. Right, I hope if you have a go at dyeing them yourself, you have some good success as well. It really is simple. I was going to make a video of it, but I just really didn't have the time. And I had this specific time slot to actually dye my fabrics um, and I just didn't have time. So I've taken a couple of pictures that I'll have included and I'll write down in the comments box the colours. So what was the main colour? What was the kind of overlay colour? Um, so you've got a bit more information if you want to go back and have a go yourself. But anything in those similar colours, I'm sure would work brilliantly. Right, day 17, let's have a look. Ooh. Black Magic Mascara Cocoa Edit Drama and Curl. So a brown mascara, which is interesting because I very rarely use brown mascara or eyeliner. But I do have a burgundy one, which I really like. So I might give that a whirl. I'll tell you what, by the 24th, I'll be coming on with a full face of makeup. Looking a bit better. And number 17. Cursory little uh, feel up there. Let's see. Ooh. Baked clay. That is a lovely colour. Baked clay. There we are. That's it from me. I'll see you tomorrow. Stay classy, Stitchers.